Amen. And I know this starts off the night, the first night of the revival. But, excuse me. This is not going to be a revival. This is a deliverance service. Get in the channel. Just get in the channel. Because God, God wants to do something magnificent in our lives. This is the day and time that we're in now that where manifestation should be taking place. Come on. I tell him at Divine Grace and Christian Center that if we truly Get on track with God. Amen. We can put doctors in hospitals out of business. Yeah. Yeah. And I just believe in what the Bible says that we, when they're sick among you, call for the elders Amen. of the church. Come on now, that's what we're saying. Man. Come for the illness. But there's too much sickness around the house of God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Going back means we go back to laying hands. Amen. We go back to pushing back the plate. We come in unison and pray. Amen. If we want to see a magnificent movement of God, it's, it's one thing to be around the church, but it's something else when you are in the church. There's a lot of people around the church, but when you get in the church, that's a difference. It's a big difference. And I wonder why sometimes why we don't see miracles happening every day. Come on. Come on. And the reason is we not own our job. We're not on our job. Come on. Amen. We gotta push the plates back. Not just to lose weight. We gotta push the plate back to intercede. To go and pray. Go and pray. Now let me share something with you just a minute before we move on. When God blessed me with this woman right here, I real. And I realized something just a short time ago that I had allowed myself to get too comfortable because I had a wife. Come on now. Hello, I'm trying to help somebody. I allowed, I allowed myself to get too comfortable. Had the rib, had the wife, and everything just flowing, you know. I'm still preaching. Still laying on my hands. But I had gotten to the point of where I stepped behind the cross right, instead of being in front of it. Come on. Come on. So God had to remind me of the first love. The first love was him. Huh? The first love was him. And the way he reminded me was, I laid hands, but I really didn't feel them. Well, it's supposed to be them. It's okay. But I allowed myself to get comfortable. What are you saying, preacher? We can't allow ourselves to get comfortable. All right. We should never 
be comfortable with where you are in your spiritual walk with God. Something is wrong if you're comfortable where you are. And I'm talking spiritually. I'm not talking about a building that you come to worship in. I'm talking about in your spiritual walk with God. The writer said, it's how your heart's in deeper depth. But some of us have gotten too complacent. If we want to see all types of results, but we are too complacent. We are too comfortable. We don't want, we don't want our feathers ruffled. We want to say, well, no. but you still want God to drop the blessing down. You still want God to do all these things, but what are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? What, 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 what are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? See, I'm going to go another way. You're going to change the message. That's just like you. That's just like you. That's just like you. And I just want to ask this question tonight. Where is your man? Where is your man? You come into this building, but where is your man? The physical part of you is here, but where is your man? Come on. The word of God tells us is what? Let this man be new, which was where? Oh, also in Christ Jesus. Right. So where is your man? If you want to see a manifestation, Amen. get back into the word of God. Amen. Begin to follow the instruction of what God is telling us to do. Amen. That's been enough preaching, enough Amen. teaching. Amen. Now it's time to see some miracles. Amen. Now it's time to see some deliverance. Amen. Come on. It's time to see it. Why we don't see it? It ain't, it ain't God. No, it's not God. It's us. That's it. That's it, man. Come on. The word says he's not a man and he shall lie. So if something is not going the way it should be, then we need to examine ourselves. See, I can tell on me. I can tell on me. See, because I want to get it right. I want God to continue to use me and, and manifest Himself in me and through me so I can tell on me. You know, I, I can keep my stuff straight. When I fall short, I know I don't feel short. I go right back down in prayer. Lord, forgive me because I messed up. But when He puts it in you and he know, you know He's called you to do a work, you got to do that work. You got to do that work. It don't matter how they feel or how they, what they say about you. You still got to press your way up. Amen. That's it. You still got to press your way. So I asked you, I asked you a question. Where is your mind? Where is your mind? Where is your mind? Is your mind with, with the people and how they feel and their opinions? Or is your mind with Jesus? Amen. See, we live in a, a dispensation of time now. You gotta be have that boldness just like Paul. Paul said, look, I done made up my mind, I'm going all the way. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't half stepping. I ain't got no friends in this in this relationship right here. It ain't nobody but me and Jesus. I ain't got no buddies. I ain't got no buddies. Because buddies will get tired, buddies get uh, leave you by the wayside. But Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So where is your man? Where is your man? Where is your man? Where is your man at? Huh? Where is your man? David himself said he came to a conclusion that he had to make up his own man. David had all of the riches that he could desire. Had women running out the window. Hello. Come on now. Had it on. Yeah. He even had a prophet that told him, you done messed up. But one thing David had to realize himself was that. My Lord. 
I done messed up myself. And when David got to the point of where he wanted some encouragement, I wonder why Nathan the prophet did not give him encouragement. He gave him a word concerning the sin and what he had did wrong, but he did not give him a word of what? Encouragement. He didn't give him that. He didn't give him that. But what did he give him? He told him he was wrong. David had to realize his own self. He said, I've got to encourage my own self. I got to pat my own self on the back. I've got to pick my own self up. Stop waiting on somebody else to pick me up. Pick my own self up and say, I can do it. Pastor Paul said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. That strengthens me. It's good to have friends. Good to have prayer partners. But sometimes they gonna get tired. Sometimes they gonna get weary. So what do you do? Well, I can't pray today because I ain't got my prayer partner. I need my prayer partner. Huh? Well, Jesus needed somebody when he went to the garden and get sent him. But guess what? He didn't have nobody. He prayed to the Father. Himself. And we saw him what? Move in a mighty way. <laughs> I thank God tonight. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. I ask the question, where's your mind now? Huh? Where's your mind? Is it in the right place? And see, the enemy plays with our mind. He plays with our mind. He always painting a picture about your mindset. He's always painting a picture. Come on. So if you want a scripture, I'll give you a scripture. Just to back it up. But I still need to know where your mind's at. See, there's no point in going any further with this service if we don't know where our mind is. It's no point in even coming back tomorrow night if you don't know where your mindset is. Is your mindset to come and get delivered? Get rid of some stuff that's been hindering you? Some, some stuff that's been bothering you? Or are you just coming and call somebody and invited you out? We come with an expectation Amen. that God is going to move in our life. We, we, we come with an expectation that God is going to move. So when we ask the question, where's your mind? That's what we're meaning. Where's your mind? Minds are scattered everywhere. Minds be all over the place. But when your mind is scattered, you got to reach and grab it and pull it back. Take hold, take the hold on your mind. Come on. Reach and grab. The mind is the most powerful thing next to the heart on the human body. The word of God says, whatsoever man think, so is he. That's why I just don't believe in hanging around negative talking people. If you're negative talking, I don't need to be around you. I love you, I pray for you, but I'm going on the other way. You got to look at what the scripture said. The scripture said, Paul said, come out from among them and be ye separated. And a lot of folks got that back. Come out from among them and be ye separated. And they always wanted to point that to the unsaved person. Hello, like, How y'all doing? You can't always look at that as being, well, that person is not saved, so I ain't got no business hanging around. How they going to get saved if they're saved don't be a man? Tell me how y'all got that thing backwards. How you gonna get saved if you don't be around them? Yeah, right. Who's gonna witness to them? Yeah, right. If we're following Christ and we have the mind of Christ, the character of Christ, then we gotta do just like Christ did. Yeah, right. Where's your mind? Huh? Where's your mind then? Where's my mind? Where's, where's that scripture that let your mind be in you? Huh? That's your scripture for tonight. 
Let this man be in you. Do you have this man? Now we talking about a, a, a God said man. We talking about a man that jumped from here over there, over here, over here, over here. Because then you want to stay. I told the church Sunday, if you want to stay, but then you sit down because you ain't ready to leave nobody. If you want to stay, you got an unstable spirit about yourself, and you go over here and grab somebody else, then they going to become unstable. Now you got two unstable people. That's jumping from one place to another. Don't even know why they move. They just move. My friend moves, so I'm going to move. News nugget. You going to hell if your friend go to hell? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think you do. So where is our mind? And see, that we live in a dispensation of time now where there's so much that is enticing to the mind. Amen. That's why you got to take hold of God's word and you got to cherish it. You got to nourish it. You got to feed yourself with it. Just like a baby on the stuff in the body. You don't never get enough of God's word. You just got to continue to eat, 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 eat. You see, you said eat the whole world. I see folks that got food. How do you get food so quick? You can't get full off of the word of God. You got to keep eating. Right. I'm tired. I'm going to take a break. No, you, it ain't no breaks. It ain't no breaks. Taking a vacation. When? When you take a vacation? You take a vacation. So in other words, when you take a vacation, you forget about the break. I'm on vacation now, so I pick up the word when I get back. That's very dangerous. The word's supposed to be in you. Amen. Jesus let it make my word abide in you. And you abide in my word, then you can ask. We got people that are asking, but they ain't abiding in the word. They asking, but the word ain't really in them. Right. They read it, but it's not really in them. Because if it's truly down in you, then it would manifest itself out of you. And you wonder why you're still doing the same thing. Huh? Where's your mind? Where's your mindset? Your mindset has to change. Your mindset has to change. In order for growth to take place, your mindset got to change. You, you've got to do something that you've never done before. That's what I did. God said, do something you ain't never did before. In 2018, God told me to start over. Start over? He said, yeah, start over. I said, how do, what, what do you mean, Lord, start over? He said, yeah, start over. He said, well, when you start over, I need to start it over to begin with you. Didn't feel too good. But he said, I need to start over with you. In other words, your mindset got to change. Your thought pattern has to change. You, you got to do a 360. When you turn around, then you'll see some stuff. So we got to know where our mind is. We quote the scriptures, but are we acting on the scriptures? See, we, we, we can quote them all day long. And we know them, but are we acting on them? Huh? Are we acting on them? That's why people... Sick, come into the DD, D, Divine Direction Christian Center, DDCC. I just don't believe me walking out the same way. Amen. No, something's wrong. When I got saved in 1992, the old saints taught me that the church was the hospital. Amen. So that tells me we, we ain't got a little bit of slack in the hospital. We got too many six folks rolling up in the hospital, but they ain't walking out. They still being rolled out of the hospital. So if this is the hospital, and the word of God tells us that if there be any sick among us to call for the elders of the church, praying the prayer of faith, anointing with oil, and they shall, he didn't say they might, he said they shall recover. Come on. Something's wrong. 
Something's wrong. Amen. We got to get our minds straight. Amen. Our thought pattern. Got to come, got to, we got to get back there because this is what God is calling for. And it's going to get worse if we don't get it together. Amen. If we don't get this thing together. Deliverance is just what it says. Deliverance. Amen. Strongholds is just what it says. How do we tear down the strongholds? If our mind is clogged up. If we don't know which way we're going in our mind, how are we going to tear down the stronghold? How are we going to help somebody else when we don't even know where we are, what we're doing, and why we're doing it? Come on. So, tonight is to get our minds focused on deliverance. I'm saved. Holy Ghost feel. I promise you, you got something you need to be delivered from. I'll say it again. I promise you, you got something you still need to be delivered from. Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Think about it. You can look at somebody and have a wrong thought. Church folks are judging people too quickly now. Amen. That's something you got to be delivered from. Amen. Passing judgment. The scripture said that all souls are healed. Amen. The saved, the unsaved, the infidel, the whatever. All saved, all souls are healed. Come on. I'm going to take an incident that happened to me today. The reason I said that, I was in Walmart. My wife had called and I was picking up some items. Young lady, I was in one cashier line. Young lady come over. She spoke, kind of dry, I spoke. She opened her cash register. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, well, you see me standing here, even though I don't have the three items, but you see me standing here. And then you look at me and you give me this little, little smirk, smile. That's what I said. And then she said, well, sir, pass me your stuff across here. I said, okay, Lord, I'm sorry. Smirk, smile was me judging her. I come to help you. I didn't come to hurt you. You see how simple and quick that happened to me? To me. Just that quick. I passed judgment off him. But before I finished, I said, Lord, forgive me. I said, Lord, forgive me. And I spoke to her, I said, you have a nice and blessed afternoon. See, you got to get it right. You, you got to get this thing right anyway. None of us have made it yet. We, we, we still down here in this flesh and we're struggling. We're striving. We're striving. Yeah, we're striving, but also in the, in the midst of a striving, there's a struggle. There's a struggle. Yeah. Things don't always go the way we want it to go. You know, always. You know? You know? You know? Sometimes we got to ask the Lord, Lord, bring me back. Amen. But bring me back, Lord, help me. Help me so I can't help somebody else. But if I never confess it and, and, and get help myself, how can I help somebody else? Where, where is our mind? Where is our mind? See, revival is the one, but where does deliver, when does deliverance take place? There's so many things that we need to be delivered from. So many things that, that's still hindering us. So many things even in our past that we just still can't shake. That still becomes a hinder to us. But we have to be, we have to have that mind like Paul. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. And he said, he also said, said, one thing I do, and that's forget those things that are behind me. The past is the past. And I, that's all that the enemy has. That's all the devil got in your life is your past. 
He ain't got nothing else. He can bring you your pants. That's all he got. I never heard nobody tell me the devil told me where I'm going. I've heard saints say everything else, but I have not heard, heard one say, the devil told me I'm going right over here and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be that. I ain't heard, heard that yet. I ain't heard that. But we have to realize that's deliverance that we, we go through so much. But it's our mindset. So the word says, let this mind be where? In you. In you. In you. In you. In you. It all starts with you. See, a lot of times, people mess up when they're trying to straighten out somebody else and they know they crooked. it. How you gonna straighten me up and you been? The word of God said, Jesus told Peter, said, when you have strengthened and overcome, then you reach back and you get your brother. Don't reach and grab me and you been. You might as well send me an unbeliever. They might be straight. They may not be saved. At least they straight up. At least they straight up. At least they honest. They're going to tell you who they are and what they are. So you already know them from Jump Street. It's the pretenders you ain't sure about. Them the ones I'm kind of concerned about. A son is going to tell you who he is or who she is. And you have to yourself. You have to respect them for that. You got to respect them for that. They tell me all the time, Rev, you know me. Yeah, I know you. And I'm glad I know you. Yeah. You know. They say a curse word, oh, Rev, you know. Y'all yeah, know. You being you. Be yourself. Then when God changed you and, and saved you, then you'll become a new creature. But in the meantime, be yourself. Just be who you are. If you ain't ready, just say I ain't ready. I'm not ready to live that life yet. I'm still out here in the world. I'm still enjoying. Okay, well, we're going to just keep praying for you. But I see a lot of time in churches, people are beating people down. Amen. It's time out for being people. Amen. 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 You, you, you can't just keep beating on folks. God told me your job is to preach and teach. That's it. I'm not a recruiter. That's not in scripture for me to do. But what's in scripture is seek beget seek. My job is to teach and preach. To, to lead. But if I got to be the recruiter, I got to be the teacher, I got to be the preacher, I got to be the leader. Good God, I'm telling you, what y'all doing? That's how I see a lot of preachers get more Burn out. Lack of help. Lack of just doing it all themselves. Come on. And even, even with the church, even with the leaders, now let me say this. Because I'm a leader. Even with leaders. In the church, inside of the church, you still have help. That is right. That is right. Amen. You got help, you just have to you just have to realize how to utilize what you have. Amen. You, you gotta realize that. Come on. That you have help. And then you know, accept the fact that help is there and use your help. The help lies the load. Mothers in the church help like the load. Sisters in the church help like the load. Brothers in the church help like the load. Other ministers in the church help like the load. You can't carry it all by yourself. If you're trying to do it all, then you're going to lose focus on really what you're supposed to be doing. Why do you think Paul said, when they came to him about the, the, the deal that was going on with the widows, Paul said, y'all want us to leave the word and come down and serve tables? Can't do that. Come on, Come on. Utilize these people in the church. Yeah, use what you use. Your, I thank God for the help He's given me. I thank God for the help because I remember the time when it was do 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 do. 
Because you're the leader, you're trying to push everything. You're trying to make sure everything yes. goes according. Yes. But then when God sends you some help, mm. and then you still don't know how to turn loose because you used yes. to doing it this way. Amen. You used to wiping the table like this. Right, Sister so and so, she come and wipe it this way. Now, that ain't the way I want that table done. You do it just like this. Come on now. But when help is on the way, it don't matter. They go this way. Let them do it that way. Let them do it that way. Don't know two people do it the same way. But the scripture says that every man minister to the ability that God has given them. Let every woman do what God has given her to do. In the house of God. Got into a discussion about people. Women did this. I said, wait, wait, hold up. Stop, stop. Put the brakes on it. Let's take it back. Who's with Jesus when he went to the tomb? To raise Lazarus. Huh? Who did Jesus tell? Go tell my brother. That I done rose. Just like I said. And I will meet them. Come on now. That's, that's the scripture. All right, huh? When, when Jesus was sitting at the table and, and, and the woman kneeled down and, and began to wash his feet, and the mama said, "Well, he don't, he's not a prophet because he don't know who's washing his feet. He knew who was washing his feet. Mary was washing his feet. The same one that he cast the seven demons out of. That was the one that was washing his feet, and then took a long for the hand." And dry his feet. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? I thank God for the women. I thank God for the women. Come on. I thank God for them. Come on. They serve. They serve in many capacities. They serve in many areas. Come on. They don't just cook food. Come on, that ain't just their job just to cook. And, and, and it, it goes way beyond that. They, they not, you know, just cook. Well, you supposed to be cooking. Okay, they cook, but what else do they do? They do a lot of other different things. That's why it's not your help me, it's your help me. Come on, that's real. That's, that's, that's the real that God blessed you with. That's the real that God gave you. So you work hand in hand. And, and, and nothing is no is more beautiful that I see than a husband and wife in ministry working together. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And they both know their lanes. He's the head, she ain't gonna step over the head, she ain't gonna step around the head, she ain't gonna go to sister so and so. Or either she's gonna let sister so and so well. I think Pastor needs to do this. No. No. You stop it right there. All right. Amen. You don't bring ideas to the wife to try to get to the leader. Mindset. What kind of mind you got? Because your, your mind is going to determine your motives. Huh? Even your closest friend can, can become a deceiver. Come on. Your closest friend. Because yeah. what is their motive? What's really on their mind? When it comes to you, what what really are they there for? And my wife, she was telling me one day. She said, "Honey, said I have I have people calling me. And they, you know, want to get be friends with me." She said, first thing I ask them, why you want to be my friend?" <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Why? You, what, you know, what, what is it you're looking for? There's got to be something in there. Come on. But we have to realize that, that people today, we're dealing with people, but actually you're dealing with spirits. Yeah, that's right. that's true. Yeah, that's true. Spirits. That's true. Spirits. Call people that kind of Amen. Yeah, spirits. Amen. Spirits. That's all it is. A spirit. I, I've never seen so much jealousy in the house of God. Hello. Y'all, it ain't no shouting mess, but I'm about to do but, but I've never seen so much jealousy in the house of God. Come on. If God bless you to move on and to start a work, God bless you. Prayer's with you. Come on. 
Amen. That's it, Mother said. Amen. More power to you. God, God bless you. Come on. Because if he did it for them, he's going to do it for you. All right. Amen. They that wait up on the Lord and shall what? Renew that strength. Renew that strength. Then what's going to happen after you get your strength? See, God got a time and a season set for everything. See, we have the prayers, but God got the season. Our prayers versus his season. So you pray the prayer, but God said it's not going to be released until the season. Until your season comes. Because a lot of times folks will get ahead of the season. You, you in the chair, but you just stepped in front of the season. So what does the season do? The season steps back. Because you stepped in front of it. God is a gentleman. The Holy Ghost is a gentleman. The Holy Ghost is not going to reach you and snatch you back. It let you keep right on walking. Amen. This is what I feel. You feel? You need to know. If God ain't leading you, then why are you feeling it? You, you, you got to know for sure. I, I preached the message Sunday and I told the church, I said, you got to make sure of your calling. If your calling just says stand at the door, that's your calling. Can't nobody move you from there. Huh? Because you know why? Because God going to anoint you just for that position. Just to do that one thing. Whatever that one thing is, God will anoint you to do that. So what? What is our season? See, we pray in the prayers, right? We give the scripture, the prayers of the righteous, the baby much. We say that. Huh? Prayers. But what about the season? The season. Your prayers versus his season. God moves by season. Season. And when we don't see it, it does not mean it's not the season. And when God moves someone in another direction or he gives them a new assignment, then we look at the individual, but we have not looked at the season. We ain't looked at the season. You know why you didn't look at the season? It wasn't for you to see, but it was for that individual to see. But you was being a saint and a man and a woman of God. Your thing was to pray. Where's your mind? Where's your mind at? Huh? Some, some people, man, mind and brother is just like tic-tac-toe. All over the place. Amen. All over the place. I'm saved. Yeah, you still saved. The Holy Ghost still. But your mind is rambling. Your mind rambles. So that means you got to reach and grab it. And pull it back. The mind controls the body so that even when the enemy brings a, a thought that shouldn't be there. If you don't get rid of it, if it begins to linger at just a few minutes, you will find yourself acting on that thought. That's how powerful the mind is. So the writer said, let this mind be in you. Which means, you have to allow God to come in. You have to allow him to work on your mind. Work in your heart. Work in your spirit. Because the mind is the most powerful thing. Where does the enemy play with you at? You ever thought about that's the only place he played with you at? He don't play with you nowhere else. But in the mind. That's where he comes at. He attacks the mind. Yeah. He attacks the mind physically. He attacks the mind mentally. And even now to the point that where people want to say you're crazy. You ain't crazy. Amen. I just don't believe that. Amen. I don't believe that. I told the church in Mobile, I said, two things I just don't believe to a saint to go through. One is depression. And you ain't got no business being oppressed. Because whom the Son of God has set free, you're free indeed. You're oppressed because you want to be oppressed. 
That's no depression in God. That's the enemy playing with your mind. Want to make you think you crazy. Want to make you think you, you about to lose it. Want to make you think that everybody's against you. That's the enemy painting that picture in your mind. Even when good friends walk away, you still thinking about it. Well, I thought they was this, and I thought they really loved me, and we had this relationship. That's the enemy working in your mind. You ain't crazy. You know what God, you know how God deals with you. He don't deal with no two individuals the same way. The body of Christ is just like a box of crayon. All different colors. Hello. Hello. So you can't pull out the red and expect the red to paint white. You get blue, that's all you don't get is blue. The God we serve is just like God told me one day. He said, my children are just like little children on the playground. He said, you got so many in the sandbox. You got some on the seesaw. You got them on the swing. He said, look at two of them in the sandbox. They got a bucket. They playing a little truck. They playing. They get mad. One get out the sandbox. But here comes the parent. What you do to my child? God, my child, my child didn't do that. But God said, if you leave them alone, they go right back together. Nothing that will happen. Why can't grown folks do that in the church? Why grown folks got to fall out and leave and get all bent and out of shape? Why they got to do that? But you still don't say you saved. You still say you love God. My Lord, that's a word. Come on. You still say you love God. Still come to the church. Still praising him. Still giving him the praise. Still worshiping him. But he said, you can't even get along with my brother and my sister, but you say you love me. How can that, how can that work? How, how are you going to love me and, and, and I can't stand there to make fears? I love God probably, but I, I just really don't care too much for you. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. You know, you're all right. I just really don't care too much for you. Come on, Pastor. But I'm in the pulpit on Sunday. Oh, hallelujah. God is good. But I, I, I can't get home with my brother. Come on. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with that. That's a bad picture right there. You, you need to adjust your and tell it because you ain't, you ain't getting a clear picture. Because God is about love. And that's what we do. We love one another. Love has a multitude of faults. I ain't looking at your fault. I'm still looking at you. Because Christ made you, created you. I did. Yes, he did. All souls here. God loves you. God loves us all. All of us in our messed up ways. That's it, all of us. All of us. The worst we all have seen come short. And what I know about God, sin is sin. No big sin, no little sin. But He gave us a choice. He said, Repent. So if you repent, I'll forgive you, fool. But it starts with our mind, church. It starts with our mind. Your mind, your mind, your mind. And that's what that's what God was dealing with me about. It's the mindset of the people. Your mind. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to come together in our mind. We come together in the physical, but where is our mind really? Or we focus on the mission. Everybody has an assignment. All you got to do is to get on your assignment. Just work what God has given you. Yes. Huh? You got an assignment. Help is good to have. Help is a wonderful thing to have. It's a blessed thing to have some help. Come on. So we may not always agree, but we can disagree and agree. Don't mean we fall out. Don't mean we depart ways. 
God is still God. And what and, and then my told me said it. When I think about how Jesus sent his disciples out two by twos. He sent them out after he trained them, right? Okay. All ministers are not supposed to remain with you forever. All right. They're not. Their day is going to come. Their season is going to come and they're going to have to spread their wings. Yeah. That's my armor barrel right there. Minister Milton, stand up. That's my armor barrel right there. Amen. He's our, he's, he's our armor barrel. He's also our youth director. But his season is going to come that he's going to spread his wings. And the blessed part is what, what makes me feel good is that I have trained him and taught him the way God is to do it. That's my son. That's my son. I, I can send my son now. Because my son has been trained. He's been well taught. So it, it, it makes daddy feel good when he can send his son out on the side. It should make the church feel good when one of your brothers and sisters can go out on this time. Yes, sir. 